I was thinking up video ideas in the shower one night when it hit me. Frogs. Why frogs? Uh oh. Top 10 frogs video games, let's go! During the late 80s, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had taken over pop culture. Naturally, there were people who wanted in on that, which spawned things like Battletoads. The only reason the Battletoads are at number 10 is because they technically aren't frogs. They're toads. Same thing! Biology's fake news! This actually goes for a lot of the entries on this list. A lot of them are canonically toads, but share characteristics of frogs. The Battletoads, for example, are green. Toads are not that. Anyways, Battletoads has built up quite the reputation for itself over the years. For starters, it is considered to be one of the hardest... It's considered to be one of the hardest. It's considered to be one of the hardest. Ah! Battletoads is considered to be one of the hardest games ever made. Need I remind you that this was during the NES era, where every game was either moderately easy or hard as a result of bad programming. It even became a meme in the early years of the internet, where people would call up GameStop or Papa John's or something and ask if they had Battletoads. It was a more civilized time. Battletoads were pretty dormant for a while after the 90s until they brought one of them back to being Killer Instinct. It's pretty cool to see the Battletoads in HD, but then I stopped playing because I suck at fighting games. It was short lived, but cool nonetheless. Okay, if the Battletoads can be on this list, then so can Lucio. Oh, let's break it. I never really had a chance to talk about Overwatch in this channel because I never had anything to really say about it. Then, I became a Lucio main. Now, I'm not too into competitive Overwatch as I only really play quick play, so I don't have one set main, but I have a select handful that I like a lot, like Junkrat, Torbjorn, Tor Torbjorn? Torb? And of course, Lucio. If my team ever needs a healer, I'll definitely choose Lucio. He's a very unique healer because you don't have to focus on one person. This means that while I'm healing my whole team, I can also do this. <laughs> I just love doing that. Oh, what? This enemy Lucio just did that to me. You can't do that. That's my thing. I'll show you. Oh, ah, uh, eh, oh, eh, come on, come on. Oh, get on there. No, 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 Did I mention I'm not very good at this game? For those who don't play Overwatch, the reason I have Lucio, a human, on a list about frogs is because he is, for whatever reason, heavily associated with frogs. He's got a bunch of frog sprays, his logo is a frog, and my personal favorite. Lucio's frog skins look so cool, I can't even fathom it. I had to buy it because it looked cool, and I couldn't risk my luck on these loot boxes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, purple! Oh, oh! Ah! I quit! I'm done! I've never really gotten into the Metal Gear Solid series. I've had Metal Gear Solid 3 on the 3DS, but I've barely played it. One thing I know about Metal Gear Solid is the collectibles. In this case, we're talking about the Kurotans from Metal Gear Solid 3. Collecting one causes it to make a wobbly sound that I can't replicate, but if you collect them all, you get a special camo. Not really that cool, but what is cool is how adorbs these things are. I want a squeaky toy of this. You know, like a, like a dog toy, one of those one of those stress squeezy thingies. That, but as a, as a Kurotan. Okay, thanks, bye. When thinking of frogs for this list, one of the first things that I thought of was the Dongero mask from Zelda Majora's Mask. However, I had to rethink the approach because a mask that looks like a frog doesn't exactly cut it. Granted, you completely disregard the fact that I included Lucio on this list. What the Dongero mask allows you to do is talk to five frogs scattered across Termina. Once you gather them all, they sing a song and give you a heart piece. These frogs are known as the Frog Choir and can be found in the Laundry Pool, Southern Swamp, Woodfall Temple, Mountain Village, and Great Bay Temple. I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty basic and all they really do is sing, pretty lazily at that, but they look like they've seen some stuff, man. It's like they're in a perpetual state of Vietnam flashback. It's a fun little side quest that brings a sense of wonder to an otherwise pretty bleak game. The whole game is a race against time, but the Frog Choir side quest pulls you out of the moment for a bit and results in a cute little moment that you'll probably forget in 5 minutes because you only did it for the heart piece. Okay, I couldn't help myself. 
I had to put a Pokemon on this list in some way. There are a handful of frog Pokemon out there like Politoed, Seismitoad, and Toxicroak, but I just had to pick Greninja. He's literally a ninja frog. How cool is that? Like, he's got a tongue scarf, my dude. Those were words that I never thought I'd say. Anyways, the real reason I chose Greninja, aside from its design, is because how powerful of a Pokemon it is. Its hidden ability, Protean, changes its type to whatever move it's using, so we get to stab boost from every attack. It has insane speed and even more insane special attack. A Scald from this thing will cripple you if you're not prepared. I'm not sure how big Battle Bond Greninja, aka Ash Greninja, is in the competitive scene, but what I do know is that Ash Greninja was awesome in the anime. What bugs me is that they never explained what the deal was with this fusion evolution thing. They introduced it and then never took it anywhere further than that he can kick butt now. So, I guess what I'm saying here is that Ninja Frogs are cool. Slippy Toad has always been the butt of the joke when it comes to the Star Fox series. He's called plenty of things like useless, annoying, and other stuff that nobody likes to be called. Heck, IGN even called him an annoying croaking pest. I for one, think that Slippy is actually pretty cool. For starters, he's a brave soul, always putting his neck out for the Star Fox team. Plus, he has to be pretty smart because he seems to be the team's engineer. According to the Star Fox wiki, Slippy actually invented the Armwing and Landmaster, so he's an essential member of the team. He's a bit of a klutz, but he makes up for it with his superior intellect. I bet half you ain't as smart as Slippy. Slippy probably went to MIT, what have you done with your life? He gets a lot of flack, but Slippy, you're my man. Never change. This spot on the list was honestly a toss up between Wart from Super Mario Bros. 2 or the Frog Suit from Super Mario Bros. 3, but I just had to give it to the Frog Suit because it's just more fun and useful. Sorry Wart, I know you're an underrated video game boss, but you got nothing on the Frog Suit. The Frog Suit was an item that allowed Mario to be stationary in underwater levels. Nintendo has quite a history with making underwater levels as annoying as humanly possible, but the Frog Suit makes them just a little bit less unbearable. Not to mention that this thing is totes adorbs. Like, look at the cluelessness in his eyes. It looks utterly confused about everything that's going on. Kinda like me. The Frog Suit never got much attention after Super Mario Bros. 3, other than a brief appearance in the two most mediocre Paper Mario games and as an item in Super Mario Maker, but Nintendo doesn't seem to give the Frog Suit any love. Until the Super Mario Odyssey trailer, which showed Mario possessing a frog, that is. Is this a spiritual successor to Frog Mario we've wanted for so long? Only time will tell. I've never been the biggest Mega Man fan, but Toad Man from Mega Man 4 is actually pretty cool. What I like most about Toad Man is that he was originally a peaceful robot master who was used for watering crops until Dr. Wily was like, nah, that's mine now, and turned him into what I believe to be the most underrated Mega Man villain. He doesn't want to kill you, he's just been programmed to. I almost feel bad because Toad Man is actually considered to be one of the easiest robot masters to beat in the Mega Man series but I like his concept so much that I felt like I needed to include him on this list. He has the basic abilities of a frog, such as jumping and, uh, well, that's really it. His special ability is that he summons Acid Rain that can eat through Mega Man's metallic robot body. The best thing about this is that this attack is unavoidable. Raincoats? Umbrellas? Psh, none of that'll save you from Acid Rain! Justice reigns from above! <laughs> Come on, let's be real. How could I not include Frogger on this list? I'm obligated to as a human being. He's the OG video game Frog. Everyone and their mother knows who Frogger is. Need I say more? You're probably thinking, who could possibly be more Frog than Frogger? Well, only a Super Frog, of course. Super Frog is probably the most obscure entry on this list, and that's probably for a good reason. Super Frog was a 1993 platformer for the Amiga of all systems. Like, for real, unless you're really into retro gaming, most people have no idea what an Amiga is. I had never heard of it until I did a little bit of research for this video, but apparently it was popular enough that I got an HD remake in 2013. History lesson aside, let's get back to frogs. More specifically, of the Super Variety. The plot of Super Frog is a twist on the whole Frog Prince thing from Fairy Tales. In this case, the frog is trying to save a princess, so it's a little interesting spoof in a sense. The goal of the game is to collect enough coins to get to the end of the level, and I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty easy. The thing I like most about the character of Super Frog is his design. The box art doesn't do it justice, but the title screen totally does. Look at this smug mother frogger. He's the froggest frog of them all. Other frogs are ashamed they aren't enough of a frog as Super Frog is. Super Frog is super obscure, and I think is definitely deserving of the best frog in video games. 
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I haven't had really much of a chance to do more comedic stuff on this channel because I've been doing a few more serious, more analytical videos, but I'm trying to get more into the comedy type videos because they're so much more fun to make than, you know, being a uh, cynic all the time. So if you like this video, drop a like. If you like me, follow me on Twitter. Um, if you want, subscribe. Uh, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. I see you next time.